guys, welcome back to the Unleashed. I'm your host, Jared Beeler. I uh, needed to uh, clarify something that uh, I uh, did wrong in the last video, and uh, I just want to uh, get things fixed up here. Uh, I talked about J.D. Farage and how he's one of the, the few uh, bigger passers that is thinking this the season we're in, and of course you guys know I do, that the rapture's going to be taking place soon and everything, but uh, <clears throat> I spoke on... Uh, Luke uh, 17 last time, and I used the references and cross-referenced it with Matthew 24 about one being in the field and one taken. And uh, he just did his recent video, and he happened to be discussing the same thing, and uh, it, because of the times we're in, he's changed his idea and uh, believes that uh, Luke 17, which is what I was using for a reference, uh, two women grinding together, one should be taken, the other left, two men should be in the field, one should be taken, another left. <clears throat> and then shortly after that, and they answered and said unto where, Lord? And he said unto them, Worst of the body is there will the eagles or vultures be gathered together, giving a reference or whatever. But he now believes that it's uh, speaking of the second coming. I uh, I prayed hard on it last night, and, and it really bothered me, but I went to sleep, and I was thinking about it, and I want to correct everything that uh, that I might have got that could confuse somebody or something else. And, you know, and I talked to God about it, I'm like, uh, why leave such a reference like that if it's only for the second coming of one being taken and one left when it's such a clear example and especially for somebody like me who's uh, got to experience the rapture and going up and uh, being in a crowd of people being the only one taken out and looking in a distance and seeing eight others out of a uh, population of around 2,000 leaving about less than 1% uh, about half of 1% uh, population across the board. Uh, it seemed like such an opportune time to speak of it. and. Uh, and the real thing comes down to is because Matthew uh, 24 and uh, Luke 17 are referencing two different things here. I'm going to try and clarify this the best way that I can, okay? My mistake was is I used Luke uh, 17 and speaking of the people that were taken, cross-referencing with Matthew 24, speaking of something that I believe points absolutely to what it's like in the rapture with something that might be taking place, uh, referencing the second coming or possibly something that was speaking around 70 AD with characteristics of it, okay? When Jesus is speaking, uh, he's speaking, looking from a future perspective, and uh, and a lot of the stuff that gets written down, you know, uh, when he's talking about it, he's seen multiple things happen at once, and a lot of the same references uh, get used. For instance, uh, in Matthew uh, 24, 28, for worst of the carcasses, there will the eagles be gathered together, okay? And then it's referenced again in uh, Luke 17, 37, uh, worst of the body is there will the eagles be gathered together. Okay, now if I got into a firefight and I got back and uh, somebody who wasn't with me asked how it was and I told him it was like, it was a bloodbath, all right, really severe, a lot of people died, okay, uh, a few missions went on and uh, we ended up getting to another mess, it was pretty bad down the road and uh, we got out of it and uh, we said, man, that was a real bloodbath, all right. If somebody were listening to it and they didn't know any better, they might be thinking we were talking about the same things because they used the same reference, and this is the best example I can give of it, okay? When really it's two completely separate firefights and completely two separate events taking place, okay? And that is exactly what I believe is taking place with this. The best example I can give is when I discovered uh, from listening to Chuck Missler and some commentary he was speaking of between uh, Luke 21 and Matthew 24 where people believe they're both speaking about the same thing or, or the second coming um, or uh, or the rapture or anything like that when they're two different groups of people and, and two different events being spoken of and it's very interesting. Uh, in Luke 21, uh, Mr. pointed out that uh, it's a large group of people <clears throat> that are being spoken to and uh, he's speaking actually of uh, what happens from 66 70 AD when Israel gets destroyed and it's because of this because they're watching for these events to take place uh, this sort of hint at future reference to the abomination of desolation which is the destruction uh, that, that takes place in the future well this is one that was going to take place in only a, a few years down the road but it's because of this that Christians were aware and when they saw these events take place they fled and then the Christians weren't killed when uh, Jerusalem was surrounded, but while the Jews were. All right, it's the same sort of reference. Now the same wording and everything like that almost used exactly the same in Matthew 24. Isn't speaking of what would happen in 70 D at all, but it's actually speaking of uh, the second coming and the events leading up to the rapture and the tribulation and events like that. So the wording can be very very tricky on this, and, and like you say, uh, um, like I, I'm happy to learn new things too. But if I mess up on something or if I'm, I might 
mess somebody else up, I want to be quick to apologize on that and uh, and try and straighten it out the best that I can. So that's what I'm uh, trying to do right now, especially with the last video, because I used the references from Matthew or uh, from Luke 17, speaking of one person being taken and the other left, and referencing with Matthew, when I was referencing the whole thing as being what it's going to be like when... Uh, the rapture happens, how it's going to be like the days of Noah when they're on two different events and uh, and it's being referenced kind of using the same wording and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to try and clarify that the best that I can, okay? In Luke 17, when I was using that for a reference, it gets to the bomb, says, we're, uh, uh, we're to Lord, and uh, in verse 37, he says, worse over the body is there will the eagles be gathered together, okay? And I'm speaking kind of fast because it takes so long to upload these videos, you guys, uh, with the internet service uh, and the situation I'm in right now. Last time it took hours and hours and hours. Um, so I'm talking kind of quick on this, but I want to try and clear it up the best way that I can. And uh, <clears throat> with this reference here, whether it is speaking of the second coming, like J.D. Farage believes, and uh, this has to do with judgment, people getting snatched up and taken to it, or if it's speaking of something else or an over an over reference to the times that are going to be taking place between two events, possibly 70 AD or the second coming, uh, very well it could be something along those lines. But in Matthew 24, I absolutely believe that it is speaking of the rapture, okay? Now, I've done some commentary on Matthew 24 before and I've broken it down. If you guys are reading Matthew 24, you'll notice that there are four different areas where... Uh, uh, paragraph start within the chapter itself. Verse 3 has a starting point, all right? Verse 29 is a starting point, verse 36 has a starting point, and verse 42. All are different angles, and I've discussed it before, whereas the first paragraph that starts off in the chapter 24 kind of gives a whole overview of what's going to take place, ending with uh, verse 28, where so over the carcasses there will the eagles be gathered together, warning the Jews, and when he's talking to this small group, of what's going to be taking place, uh, the judgments, uh, Israel going through the tribulation and stuff like that and then it goes from verse 29 immediately after the tribulation in those days speaking about the end part uh, says uh, the moon shall not give her light uh, the powers of heaven will be shaken and it shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and it's talking about when he shows up the second coming okay and then it says uh, when a fig tree is tender all right you know summer is nice so likewise when you know you shall see these things I know that it's near and at the door verily I tell you that generation shall not pass away something that's we've referenced that why since 1948 Israel becoming a nation stuff looks like it needs to pick up then in verse 36 this is where I go I believe that it goes to a, a preview of before the whole thing kicks off. But of that day and hour, verse 36 in Matthew 24, knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but the fa my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, here we get this reference of uh, just like the times of Lot and Noah, <clears throat> it's going to catch people off surprise. They're not going to be expecting it, just like they weren't expecting it in 70 AD or 66 uh, when they were getting surrounded in Jerusalem, just like the time of the tribulation about to start. These events will catch people off guard because they're going to be going around their daily business, okay? They're going to be thinking that maybe this time's going to pass, all right? There's still, a, just because even if America was completely locked down, but other countries are still buying and selling and being out in the field and stuff like that, it doesn't mean that everybody's experienced that same thing. So the very people that are be talking about where one's taken another left could be speaking of another country. It's not, it might not even have anything to do with us, but the, thing, the same events are taking place. It's just something to think about, okay? All right, verse th for, uh, 38, for as the days of, uh, before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until uh, the flood came and took them all away, so shall come in uh, the Son of Man be, right? I believe this is a reference to tribulation, the events that kind of take place and overshadowing of it. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, and another left, something that I've referenced before, but I was using uh, Luke 17 when I shouldn't have, I'm very sorry about that, all right? Two of them should be grinding in the mill, one should be taken, and another left. And then that paragraph ends right there, right? That's it. It doesn't say anything about being taken where the eagles are or where they're gathered or anything like that. And that is why I believe that Matthew 24 is absolutely hinting right here of what it's going to be like in the rapture, all right? This is what I experienced. It was very few people. I didn't see very many going up. I was standing in line. I was in a bad mood. I saw UFOs show up. Boom, I get blasted up. And immediately when I'm going up, the joy hits, of course. And I'm told you'll never have to worry about a stupid job ever again. You'll never have to worry about financial issues ever again. I see my stepdad on, down on the bridge. I zoom in. I have eagle vision. I'm already starting to experience some of the new abilities that the body has. The body has changed instantly. And in twinkling of an eye, just like it, it describes, but the journey up is enjoyable. And I don't know how long it lasts because I only 
was in, in it for about 10 to 15 seconds. It was absolutely incredible. You are flying, you are experiencing, but the change of the body, it changes instantly. Otherwise, I would have been killed by the amount of joy that was flowing through me, okay? Then in verse 42, we switch to another paragraph angle where it says, Watch therefore, for you know now what hour the Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known it, uh, uh, <clears throat> to watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore ye also be ready, for in such an hour ye think not the Son of Man cometh. When there, oh, <clears throat> who then is faithful and wise servant who the Lord hath made ruler over his house? Hold, to give them the meat in due season. Blessed is that servant uh, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing. Verily I say unto you that, that he shall make him ruler over his goods. But in it, if that servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in the day uh, when he looketh not for him, in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him to a portion with hypocrites. There shall be need, uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth, speaking of tribulation, and going to hell, and all kinds of other bad stuff right there, okay? So to watch and pay attention to. Here are some issues that I have with uh, that reference in uh, 17, even being speaking of the second coming, and maybe not something else, like possibly 78. The problem is, is it says that there are, uh, I tell you in that night, there should be two in one bed, one should be taken, another left. All right, two and should be grinding together, one should be taken, another left. Two men should be in the field, one should be taken, and another left, okay? I have a hard time believing there's going to be anything normal going on at the end of the tribulation, right? I've made the point before, and I've broken down the numbers, the reasons why, okay? The two witnesses are here. Uh, from the first half, 1260 days of the tribulation to the second half, okay? The... Antichrist knows that they can't be killed and fire comes out of their mouths and they can do stuff, right? Where are they at? It says where they die at, in Jerusalem, okay? So they're in Jerusalem. If the Antichrist wants to come into the temple and, and take over, what does he do as soon as he does that? He kills the Jews off. They have to flee, okay? For 1260 days they go to Petra, all right? Obviously he can't do that if there's two guys that are blocking their tanks with blow fire and they can't die, okay? So they have to wait till after the second part. So that means they're in the first part because we know the Jews when they flee for 1260 days, this is half of a tribulation point. All right, so they're in the very first parts of it, okay? Knowing that they're in the very first parts of it, and right up to the second point, why? Because the seventh trumpet that blows from the vial or from the seals to the trumpets, the seventh one that blows is right after they go up. So we know that the seventh one blows at that time. The two trumpets before that, six and five, are the two that are mentioned how long they last exactly. The fifth for five months, and the sixth for a month uh, or a year, a month, a day, and an hour, okay? You put those together, it's a year and a half. You can come back from that point to the two year mark, all right, starting into the tribulation, at the two year mark is when the fifth trumpet starts, which means seals one through seven and trumpets one through four happen before the two year mark, all that's crammed in the beginning. Knowing this and knowing that the sixth trumpet takes one third of the earth's population, because it says so, and the four horsemen take a quarter, you can combine them together without even counting the other disasters that are mixed in between and how many millions of people are going to die, and you can already get up to about six eighths of the world population dying, all right, that's about six billion people. Six out of eight people are going to be laying dead everywhere. There's going to be death and destruction all over the place, all right? To think that people at the very end, because then you haven't even got to the vials where God turns the whole oceans into blood, rivers into blood, and everything else, right? Total pandemonium. The sun gets scorched up hot. Hailstones are falling out of the sky, and they already know because they have a time limit, all right? It's not going to be catching them off guard. As soon as the Jew Jews go out, and they know there's 1,260 days to realize Jesus is the Messiah, and they were betrayed, all right? You can count down the days, at least close enough. You're going to be looking, like, if it's in a three-day uh, mark, you're going to be staying up the whole time. You're going to know that Jesus is coming back right at this time. It's not going to be catching anybody off guard. Whereas when we reference the rapture, uh, we're warned to watch and be ready. So is there an overlying lay of two events taking place? Possibly when it's being spoken of, okay? And when you read into this stuff, you know, you just kind of got to look at all those different kind of uh, ideas that are taking place and, and just kind of uh, flow with it in, in that sort of way, you know, because sometimes it is speaking of the second coming and other times it's bouncing back in the very next verse speaking of being ready for the rapture, all right, and the pre-tribulation, the stuff that's going to take place. Why? Because you're already, already going to know to the day, if we're speaking of the second coming, whereas the rapture is going to be hitting, which is why we're told to watch, be ready, and all that stuff like that. I mean, the second the tribulation starts, anybody who knows scripture or anything like that is going to be able to start marking down the days to the days. You're going to be able to reference of when you see the two witnesses for the first time to know that they go for 1260 days, the days that they're going to die, the Antichrist is going to know when he's going to be able to overthrow them. You're going to know how long the Jews are going to be in Petra, right, if that's where they go uh, to escape. And when Jesus returns, right, it's not going to be catching, uh, it's not going to be off guard in the same way that it is where we're told to watch and be ready, okay? So speaking of two people being in the field, one taken or, or grinding at the mill, one being taken and another, I believe is an absolute reference and it's not wasted. 
that uh, is speaking of the rapture, just like I was talking about in the last video. But those same uh, verses that are roughly the same, speaking of two people uh, in bed, and uh, uh, roughly uh, goes along with the same thing, using the same wording. I don't think it's the same event at all. I think it's speaking of two different things. Is it speaking of the second coming? I always have a hard time with that. Like I told you guys, it's not going to be business as usual at the end of the tribulation. The only ones that are going to be ready are the ones that are, are, are paying attention, or the ones that are getting ready to make war with Jesus, and they're going to die. Uh, there's going to be people scattered. It says he's going to, uh, uh, Jesus is going to send his angels to get his, uh, uh, the remnant or whatever from the four corners of the earth, all right, and the heavens and the earth, he says, all right, to, to get people so there, there might be some that are scattered here and there, uh, but the majority are going to be getting ready to make war with Jesus when he comes back, so they're going to know that time, and it's not going to be hidden or catching people off guard the same way, so I have a hard time believing that that's even speaking of the second coming in the first place, speaking of Luke 17, what I was referencing last time, using the same verses that parallel what's going on in Matthew 24. I just wanted to uh, clarify that the best uh, best way that I can, but I absolutely believe that it's speaking in Matthew 24 of the rapture and what it's going to be like. And it's going to be just as the days of Noah, roughly exampling things are going about daily business. People aren't expecting it. And of course, if you look at the majority of the world, they think that they're going to get through this or it's going to go through a season or it's going to get better. They're still planning things, even if they have to push off their wedding. All right. Roughly at the beginning of this year, it was still planned to be that way in the first place. All right. So uh, not much has changed, maybe a little bit, even if we're on standby right now. Uh, but uh, that, that's kind of how it looks right now. I, uh, I hope this clarifies it a little bit better. And like I say, I do want to apologize for using those verses from Luke 17, um, along with Matthew 24, because I believe Matthew 24 is speaking completely of uh, pre-tribulation rapture, and uh, Luke 17 is speaking of something uh, that's different, using the same wording that's similar, uh, speaking of wherever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And like you say in Matthew 24, at the end of the very first paragraph that we read here at verse 28, it says, where for the uh, the carcasses, there will the eagles be gathered together. And I believe that might be speaking of second coming, kind of wrapping the whole thing up. Before it dials into after that point, and then we get into a preview from verse 36 on to verse 42, when it says, then watch and be ready for these times. Okay, I hope this uh, clarifies a little bit kind of what I was talking about and uh, and it's my bad for using that I should have uh, I should have been more careful in that situation so uh, whether it's speaking of the second coming or a 70 AD sort of hint over on what it's going to be like and uh, or sort of the, the body is where the eagles be gathered together um, you know I, I, I don't know I don't know if that's exactly it or not I know that it's going to play out right and there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be open for uh, what, what's revealed when we get to when we get to see everything from heaven and stuff like that. It's gonna be pretty cool to see how it all uh, folded out and stuff like that. But nothing's gonna be messed up, and there is no contradiction at all either. They're speaking of two different events, the same way that Luke 21 was giving a hint uh, for the Christians to watch out and be ready for 70 A.D. when it gets attacked and to flee the area, which is the same wording, not to come down into your house, get out of the area as fast as you can, as which warned. Uh, in Matthew 24, but one is speaking of 70 AD, where another is speaking of a future event, which we know is going to be the tribulation when the man of sin uh, goes into the third temple and, uh, and betrays the Jews, okay? Uh, two different events, same wording, and uh, therefore in the same thing, uh, the whole eagles thing in verse 37 might not be speaking of the second coming at all. It could be speaking of something very well different, especially since Luke and Luke 21 is already kind of uh, talking about 70 AD in the first place. It very well could be hinting more towards that uh, than the second coming. Uh, don't know precisely. We might not until later. Uh, but it's very, very similar wording. Two people uh, working together. One's taken, and another's not. It could be being taken to a, a punishment. Uh, it could be speaking of reference of people being killed at the time. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's just hard to say. But to think that the rapture's not mentioned, or that, uh, or that there there is no rapture or something like that. That's totally false. It is a real thing. It will take place. I do absolutely believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, and I was trying to use this as the best example I could to reference the time that we're in, which is looking like it's not going to be a season, but we're actually getting up to the wire. Like I say, I don't believe that I would have been sent out this last hour. I mean, if there was a lockdown for years and then the rapture were to happen, I suppose that could be a reason, but that's not what I think, all right? Do I know how all this is going to play out? No, I don't. I mean, I, I'm along for the ride as well. I try to. I try to help people and, uh, and you know, speak as much truth on this as I can to, uh, to kind of get things, uh, uh, give you guys a heads up on stuff that I know. And, uh, and if I can, I want to, but I don't want to screw anybody up on anything like that. And so, I, I, like I say, I have to apologize for that, uh, 
for that using Luke 17 for the same reference in the same wording when it's speaking of two different things. If it threw anybody off, I, I apologize for that, so I'm sorry. Um, how do I think this is going to play out? I still think we're along for the ride, but uh, will I end up in Sandpoint? Like I said, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, or it very well might. Uh, the, this whole thing might start to clear up in about a month, all right? And uh, things might look like they're about to go back to normal. Uh, and it could very well be the hand of God in a lot of prayer. And them even thinking that it was going to spread. And all the pre-planning and stuff that they've done to get hospitals ready. Only to actually quell the whole thing out. And, uh, and it could take them by surprise. And in those moments, things might go back to normal like they were. People giving a marriage, going about daily business and celebrating and stuff like that. And then boom, the rapture happens, okay? Afterwards, the hand of protection the restrainer will be removed. All right, and from this point on, the lack, uh, it's not going to be the same anymore. Uh, and the tribulation will start. It won't be the same uh, prayer protection that we've had right now and over the years. And uh, they could release the, the biological weapon again, and this time it could just absolutely take off like it does in the tribulation when the seals are broke. And we could be looking at a situation like that. I know that if things were to go back to normal for a while, that would really... That could really put me into the mood where, uh, where I'm questioning some things. That Because I'm very mad in the beginning of that vision and I don't know why there's no explanation. And I am probably worried about having to go back and get another job and go back to business as usual because you know that that's not what I want. I am so ready to get out of here. It's unbelievable. And that could put me into a bad mood, a very bad mood. Because I'm also reminded the very first two things when I go up is you'll never have to worry about a stupid job ever again. You'll never have to worry about financial issues ever again. I can imagine if things cleared themselves up and I had to go find some work and stuff like that and, and times were just getting back to normal. Well, that could be a very frustrating thing and would be exactly what would be on my mind. Is that how it's going to play out? I have no idea. Like you said, I'm taking this one day at a time. But I can't, uh, I can't go to bed thinking that I might have screwed somebody up on something when I'm teaching something. And, and I want to make sure that I could clear this up as much as possible. Uh, Luke 17, Matthew 24, using the same wording but speaking about two different events. Matthew 24, using the same words, one being taken, another one left. Absolutely, I believe 100% is speaking of the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? Uh, not being taken where the eagles are, not the carcass or judgment or Armageddon. Luke 17 very well might be speaking of that or it might be giving hints to... Uh, what happens, uh, speaking in Luke 21 of uh, 70 AD and the attack around Jerusalem and all the Jews and stuff, they got killed, okay? Uh, hopefully this clears it up a little bit and, uh, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, you guys understand uh, that, uh, that I am, I, I truly do, I, am, I try to make this as clear as I possibly can, so if I screw it up, uh, that's my bad, but, uh, all right. Uh, hopefully this clarifies some things and, and helps out, especially if you guys are reading, the, reading this and stuff like that and there's any confusion, so... Uh, um, hopefully it helps a little bit, but uh, anyways, thanks for your time. All right. God bless. I'll kiss you guys next time. Later.